Hello, my name is Abdul Mati Asiri and I'd like to welcome in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. In this video, I'd like to talk about approach category for the Boeing 737. So here we have an RNAV approach and if you go to the minimum section here, as you can see, we have a different decision altitude for each approach category of airplanes and even the visibility requirements are different. And actually, a while back in the channel, I posted uh, this question asking whether the Boeing 737 is category C or D the majority were saying category C and some were saying D and I got a few great comments here talking about the, the subject uh, let's go to the FCTM and see what the FCTM says about this in the FCTM and the approach category here uh, it has some discussion about the approach uh, categories for the 737 but I'd like to point your attention to the statement mentioned here which is ICAO and other regulatory agencies may use different criteria so basically this is under FAA criteria, but in all cases, please uh, double check with your operation to uh, really know which approach category you should use for your operation. For the 737, 700, 600, and even in the older revisions of the FCTM, it was talking about 500 and 400, they are classified as category C. 800 and 900, it depends on the maximum landing weight. And to know more about this, we'll go to this reference here, appendix A.2.8 in the FCTM. And here what it says basically is you need to figure out Vera 40 for the maximum certified landing weight as per the AFM. The AFM is the airplane flight manual. So we are looking at the maximum certified landing weight at maximum flaps. So it's going to be flaps 40. And uh, we need to compute Vera 40. So once we do that, we'll check here. If the speed is less than 141, we'll use approach category C. If the speed is 141 or more, will use approach category D. So again, one more time, please make sure to check with your operation to really identify which approach category you should use for your operation. So let's take a look at some approach uh, plates here and we'll check the minimum section. We'll start with the precision approach. A precision approach is an ILS approach and this is the most straightforward one because here we have a decision altitude. So the decision altitude will use the altitude as it is, and this is the altitude that was set in the BFD. So set 283 in the BFD here. So decision altitude will be set here as it is 283 for precision approaches. Now let me touch on the uh, lighting section here. So this is the visibility requirement or RVR requirements for this specific approach. And we, here we have three columns, as you can see, we have full touchdown zone or center line out or approach lighting systems out. So it depends on which lighting you have for this specific approach, for this specific runway, and then that will define which approach uh, or which RVR you should uh, use or should have at least to do the approach. So full, all the lights are working. Touchdown zone or center line out, if one of them is not working, then we need to check this RVR. It's the same, but here we have a note, so we need to go to the note. The note for this approach says RVR 750 when a flight director or autopilot or HUD that is the heads up display to decision altitude is not used. So if, if you're not using uh, um, any of these things to decision altitude, then you need to increase the RVR to 750 if the touchdown zone or center line light is out. The approach light system. So here is the uh, depiction of the runway threshold with the approach lighting system. And here we have the pappies, and whenever you see a pappy, that will indicate the location of the pappy with respect to the runway. So for this runway, we have two pappies on both sides. So if the approach light system is out, if these lights are not working, then we need to increase the RVR to 1200 meters. So that's it for a precision approach. Here we have the non-precision part of this approach, which is localizer glass slope out. So if the glass slope is out, we are uh, operating now non-precision approach. I'm going to get back to this section a little bit, uh, but let me now move to another approach chart with just an MDA. So here we have a non-precision approach. This is a VR approach. And if you go to the minimum section, we have a minimum descent altitude and not a decision altitude. The difference between the two is for a decision altitude, you don't need to do any uh, altitude adjustment. However, for the MDA, you should not use this altitude as it is, but add some altitude adjustment. Usually it is 50 feet. So in the PFT, instead of putting 1080, we'll put 1130. 
And the reason for that is because you are doing a constant descent, which is the new technique of doing non-precision approaches. And if you execute a go around at the MDA or at MDA plus 50 feet, the airplane usually will dip uh, slightly as you do the go around. So for a non-precision approach with just an MDA published, you want to just make sure that you don't go below the MDA as you do the Goran, and that's why we have the 50 feet. The 50 feet is mentioned in a few places in the FCTM. You can find it under approach preparation for using VNAV. It says here, set at MDA plus 50 feet. And under decision altitude or minimum descent altitude in the notes here, it says if using an MDA, the crew may wish to select the parameter minimum selector at MDA plus 50 feet. The reason why it says the crew may wish to set the parametric minimums is, again, this is an adjustment altitude. So most of the operators I know will use 50 feet, but your operation might use a different altitude. So again, just make sure to check with your operation to know. So in the BFD, instead of putting 1080, we'll put 1130 for this specific approach. So here we'll put 1130. Now for the visibility requirement here, as you can see, we have visibility requirements and not RVR. For category C and D, you can see the uh, visibility requirements is the same whether you have the approach light system working or the approach light system is not working. And here again, this is the approach lighting system. And we have the pipes on both sides of the runway for this specific runway. Uh, here, this is the uh, identification of the approach lighting system. So we have high intensity approach lighting system. So as I said, for approach category C or D, it doesn't matter whether you have the uh, approach lighting system on or off. It's the same visibility requirement. If the approach category was either A or B, then we need to add uh, by 400 meters. So it's going to go from 1200 to 1600 meters. So let's move on now to another non-precision approach. And as you can see here, we have LPV minimums, and then we have LNAV, VNAV, and then LNAV. LPV minimums are not used uh, by the Boeing airplanes as mentioned in the FCTM. So here under uh, decision altitude or minimum descent altitude, again, the FCTM, it says note, Boeing airplanes are not equipped to utilize LPV minimums. So because of that, we'll uh, not talk about this section here. We'll talk about these two sections which you will see in most non-precision uh, RNAV approaches where you have LNAV, VNAV, DA and then you have LNAV, MDA in order for you to use this section you need an authorization to use VNAV for the approach so if you have that authorization then you can utilize this decision altitude and then the BFD will set this altitude as it is 369 again the visibility requirements here depends whether the approach license system is working or the approach license system is out and for this specific approach, we have only one PAPI to the left of the runway. For the LNAV, now we have MDA. So we'll add an adjustment altitude. We'll put in the PFD 520 plus 50 feet. So uh, what we will put was going to be 570 feet. So this is one way of depicting uh, altitudes for RNAV approaches. I'll show you one more uh, way of presenting them. Now remember, each approach chart may be a little bit different depending on the airport that you are flying to. So make sure to familiarize yourself with this with this section of the approach charts and the approach charts in general actually. Here we have another non-precision approach. And we have a DA slash MDA in this case. And a CDFA. CDFA is constant descent final approach technique. The new technique now is to fly non-precision approaches using constant descent to a decision altitude or an MDA with an adjustment altitude and then execute a go around instead of the old way of doing it. So I'm gonna show you on the, on the approach chart that we talked about previously. Here in this VR approach, as you can see, the uh, minimums are depicted both the new technique and the old technique, which is to chop and drop. Chop and drop means to cut the power, descend as soon as possible to the next altitude, level off, and then descend to the MDA, level off to the missed approach point, and then decide whether you can do a landing or just to execute a ground. That's the old technique, and I think nobody uh, uses it now in the 737. The new technique now is just to do a constant descent 
even for non-precision approaches. So that's why in the, in the chart that I was in, it was saying CDFA. So here it says CDFA, constant descent, final approach technique. So as you can see, there's no level of or step down altitudes here. Now, are you going to use the DA or, or an MDA with an adjustment altitude? The reason Jeppesen presents the minimums this way, which is a little bit weird. Actually, this is one of the reasons that it took me a long time to upload this video because I had to do some research to understand why would Jeppesen present the minimums this way. And this is what I understood from the readings that I made. And in some of the approach charts, you'll see a note here, at least they'll put one or so, and you'll have a note here that say uh, using DA in lieu of MDA is operator policy or some other notes. So know for this minimums that you need to check with your operation, whether to use a decision altitude or to treat it as an MDA and at 50 feet. This is something that you need to find out for your operation. Uh, again, here we have RVR requirements whether we have full lighting system or approach lighting system is out with different numbers pappies on both sides of the runway again this is the approach lighting system and here is the uh, approach lighting system and runway end lighting system system or configuration so how are they what what to expect when you do the approach because remember we are doing a v, uh, let's say ifr approach to minimums right and let's say that this is the first time I'm flying into this runway. So it's a good idea for you to to uh, to have an idea of what approach lighting system to that you, you'll see as you break down from uh, visual with the runway or the approach lighting system. Uh, we have two sets of minimums as you can see here. Uh, they are both the same DA slash NDA. But if you see here, it depends on whether we have the DME from the VR or not so if you not, if you do not have the dme from the vr then we need to use the uh, minimums here if we do have the dme from the vr we'll use the minimums here so this is the rls approach that we started with and here is the uh, localizer glide slope out section again we have the cdfa and decision altitude slash mda again you need to talk to your operation and understand or find out if you should use decision altitude or minimum descent altitude with an adjustment altitude. Uh, this RNAV approach is actually is unique. I mean, it's one of the few that I have seen where they have a different decision altitude for each approach category of airplanes. And even the visibility are different. So again, it depends. Are we category C and are we authorized to use VNAV for the approach? In that case, for example, we'll use 430 here as it is. Let's say that we do not have the authorization to use VNAV. In that case, we'll use LNAV minimums and we'll add an adjustment altitude again usually 50 feet so it's going to be 860 plus 50 feet so in the pfd was set 910 and again here is the visibility requirements whether you have the lighting or approach light system is out again we have two pappies on both sides of the runway for this uh, runway and here is a, a, a depiction of the approach lighting system and the type so high intensity approach lighting system now as you can see also we have two pairs of minimums both LNAV, VNAV, LNAV and here LNAV, VNAV, LNAV again and if you read here it says missed approach climb gradient minimum is 5% uh, so if your airplane can do that then you use the minimums on this side if not if you are less 2.5% then we'll use the minimums on this side now here is one thing I would like to talk about or touch on which is your operation might have an operation specification of letter of authorization to use DA in lieu of MDA for non-precision approaches. So if your operation are authorized to do that then just make sure to double check with them and see whether uh, you can use any time the MDA as a DA without any adjustment altitude. Again you need to find that with your operation. So we talked about certain approaches, precision, non-precision, non-precision DA and non-precision MDA, and then DA slash MDA. 
And the final thing here to, to cover is circuit to land minimums. For the circuit to land minimums, it's slightly different from straight in approaches in a way that they presented here the minimums in a different way. As you can see, we have the maximum speed here for this column, and the maximum speed will decide the minimum descent altitude for us to use. By the way, for uh, circuit to land uh, speed, we usually do the circle to land uh, maneuver using flaps 15. So you need to find out flaps 15 speed and then you'll decide which uh, minimum descent altitude to use. Here the MDA will not add 50 feet to it. So for a circuit to land, we'll use the MDA as it is. Let's say we'll use this 850. So this is the altitude that was set here in the VFD. And the reason that we don't add any adjustment altitude here is because as you know for the circuit to land we level off at MDA and then do the uh, the circuit to land maneuver. The approach category still plays a role in the circuit to land and that is to uh, decide or identify the protected area as far as the FAA goes I believe. I'm not sure about the other regulatory agencies but for the FAA the approach category will decide what is the protected area from the runway so in this video i just wanted to give you an idea a general idea about the decision altitude minimum descent altitude and how to uh, utilize it again i did not talk a lot about the uh, specific uh, operation specification which says that you can use md uh, da in lieu of mda so that's something that you need to talk with your operation about and actually for everything mentioned in the video just take it as for your information only and uh, just refer to your operation to identify the correct approach category whether you can use DA in lieu of MDA or not and whether you are authorized to use VINA for non-precision approaches or not uh, with that said I hope that this video would be of some benefit to you as always if you have any questions comments or concerns I'd be more than happy to answer them and until uh, next time, this is Abdul Matayasiri. Wish you a safe flying and smooth landing. Thank you for watching.